Good morning, everybody. We're in Rothsay, Minnesota. And I'm trying to get back on track with my walking every day. So here we go. So we are trucking. We're on a trip with two stops. Our first one's gonna be in Cranford, New Jersey. And our second one is in Hauptpach, Hauptpach, New York. I still don't know how to pronounce that name. Gotta be there in uh, three days. Or uh, four days, actually. It'll take me about three days to drive there. back see this roll tight has this nice fiberglass bubble on the front of the trailer to make it a little bit more slippery through the wind help with my fuel economy it's got the happy faces on the side and on the back I've never seen this trailer I never pulled it before it's a happy trailer We need to get going. We need to get going. Double check that trailer. Brakes work. Brakes release. It's attached. All right. Had my breakfast. Gone for my walk. Done my pre-trip. Psyched myself up for the day. Let's get out there. About two hours down the road is St. Cloud, Minnesota. The pilot flying J there. That's where we're gonna stop and grab some fuel. I have just over a quarter tanks left. I should be able to get there, no problem. Approximately 26 hours of driving to get to our destination. So it'll be two and a half days or so to get there. All day today, all day tomorrow, and a little bit the next day. And I gotta find a truck wash somewhere too. This is getting crazy. We made it. Exit 171, I 94, Minnesota, St. Cloud. I'm at eighth of a tank of fuel. One kilometer. Take CR7, CR75, Augusta, and then turn left at 990 meters. You have arrived at your destination on the left side. Pilot Travel Center. No lineup for fuel. Lucky day. Grab our juice, grab a coffee, and hit the road. Shoot and scoot. Come and go. Beautiful. I love this. So often you come here, it's just chaos. 
very low on fuel. It's going to be a big one. It's going to be a big one. Let's put ourselves on duty, fueling. If the government is happy, they know what I'm doing. I'm fueling, okay? Calm down. Ugh. Jacket. It's been a good day so far, but it's just begun. We gotta get through Minneapolis now. Our first big city on the way east. I wonder if I'll get down into Illinois today. I might. I'm gonna go as far as I can. We'll be driving pretty late because I got going a little late. Let's see how much fuel I'm gonna get. I'm thinking 100 and 160 gallons. That's my estimate. Let's see how close I, I am. All right, you guys want the report, the numbers? Fuel up for 185 gallons. The truck was thirstier than I thought, <laughs> quite a bit. That's 715 liters. Uh, the last time we fueled up was 1,803 kilometers ago. 1,803 kilometers in miles. That is 1,120 miles from our last fill up. That was in Cohasset, Minnesota, where we got all mixed up and came in backwards, had to go around the block and come in the right way. That's the last time we fueled up there, 1,100 miles ago. Uh, cost me today $773 Canadian or $562 USD. Pretty decent. So over this 1,800 kilometers or 1,100 miles, it cost me 48 cents a kilometer. Or, you know, 48 cents, 48 cents times one point, 77 cents Canadian a mile cost me uh, just in fuel. Obviously, that doesn't take into account tires, maintenance, my wages, my mortgage, my truck payment, insurance, all of that. But that's that. That's okay. And we averaged 5.93 miles per gallon or 39.68 liters per 100 kilometers. Not too bad. Could be better, but uh, definitely not too bad. Let's get out of here. The only safe place to park in this lot is like right where those two freight liners are off on our left. But where that Volvo is, you see how this budget guy came in and blocked him in? He won't be able to get out. People always do that here. And just left his truck there. Something else. It's always amazing to me how people just don't take into consideration other people, you know? Ah, sure, block him in. He doesn't need to go anywhere, right? How do you know? Happens more often than you'd think. You gotta be careful where you park. Okay, so we're full of fuel. Let's get through Minneapolis, St. Paul. Let's get into Wisconsin. Maybe we can find a Blue Beacon truck wash. six hours and 39 minutes available to drive from here. I can do that within eight hours and 49 minutes. We'll be driving into the night. I'll uh, worry about where to stop in a bit. I'm getting very close to the Illinois-Wisconsin border here. 
Now, Karen, my GPS, wants me to go east and go into Chicago. Wants me to go right through downtown Chicago, actually. I don't do that. I've done that before. I'm not doing that again. I used to stop at this South Beloit Flying J all the time. Illinois. Illinois. Here we are. Yeah, this used to always be my main stop. Back in the day, over the last 10 years when I used to come through here all the time, I would usually always go through the city of Chicago, Interstate 294. Uh, I used to take I-94 right through downtown until I realized how ridiculous that was. That's why the 294 is there. I'd go around on the 294, but then I suddenly realized, or someone told me once, that if you take I-39 down to 80, I think it's about 45 miles or 30 to 45 miles further so it is further around but you totally dodge most of the Chicago traffic so it depends I mean if it's worth it to you it is to me I just don't want to deal with that if I deal with all the traffic I'll go a little ways around if you're going through during rush hour, it's definitely about the same amount of time to go around. Might take a little bit more fuel though, so I guess it depends on your truck. But it's mostly all highway, and in the city it's all stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. So you might even balance out using the same amount of fuel or very close to it. If you guys come through here regularly, what route do you take? Do you go down I-39 to 80 as well, or do you just go right through the city and go right through Chicago? two bays here so it should go pretty quick if there is some people in line hopefully there's nobody but usually this time of night you usually be safe with not too much of a lineup but we shall see where is the blue beacon is it this way I think it's this way Stop to the left, right? If I remember correctly? No. Why can't I remember? Where is the blue beacon here now? There it is on the right. Got it backwards. Haven't been here in a little while. Ah, now it's starting to look familiar. Okay. There's the little mobile chapel. we get in there? I think we're going to turn in here and go around the, the back, I think? Or did I go in the wrong entrance? Ah, I just can't remember. The last time I was here is when uh, me and my father-in-law, Jerry, were running together when he first started here and we took that, uh, did that trip together, both in our own trucks, but we had stopped here and I went and got a truck wash in the morning. That's how I remembered it was here. I was parked just here off to our, our left. I just don't remember where the entrance is. Oh, okay, the entrance is on the other side. And the lineups aren't actually that bad. Good. Now I just gotta figure out how to get in there. That's the lineup right in front of us. So there's two in line for one bay and one in line for the other get over there quickly without racing through the parking lot you know with my luck by the time I get over there there's gonna be like 20 trucks in line let's hope not it has autism awareness truck this green truck on the left I mean on the right there I've seen that truck around unless there's more than one 
haven't seen that truck before. big sign here on our left truck wash entrance I should have seen that they have three bays here oh wow I thought there was two here we go we're gonna wash the truck and trailer yeah this is one of the, one of the bigger locations of Blue Beacon that's for sure very often they just have one bay. Okay, so they have two wash bays then there's a one wash out bay on the right here. We don't go to that one. Okay, that's for like washing out reefer trailers and stuff, I'm guessing. Maybe livestock trailers? I don't know. Hopefully it won't take too long. There's just one truck in front of me plus the one that's in the wash bay. It should be no more than a half hour. Uh, they're pretty quick once you get in there. As long as they don't need a bunch of detailed work done and like a washout, like we were saying there, that usually takes a little bit longer. Oh, it's gonna feel good. As long as you don't run into any rain, but I checked the forecast for the next day as we go through uh, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania. There's not supposed to be any rain for the next day or two all the way to New York. So let's hope that the forecast is right and that I'm not wasting my money. <laughs> Oh, it's steaming. That felt good, didn't it, Blue? All right. Look at steam coming off it. <laughs> Much better. than when I wash it myself. I love that this roll tight has this little cone on the front. It's actually helping a lot. Makes the trailer a lot more slippery going through the wind, right? This is only a 48 foot trailer, I believe. I've never seen it before, before this trip. But it's a happy trailer. It's a happy, clean trailer. I'm gonna go down the road to Ottawa, Illinois. Not Ottawa, Ontario. Ottawa, Illinois. Ottawa, Illinois is about an hour down the road from here. I've stopped there a couple of times before. They have great breakfasts there. Huge portions for a pretty good price, if I remember right. I hope it's still the same. find out in the morning. I'm planning on uh, grabbing a good breakfast there before we get going in the morning. 100 meters, turn left on, south to Med Road and then turn left into 100 meters. It feels so much better to be clean. Like, I can't describe to you the feeling of just, having, having a clean truck just makes my whole day so much better. I know it's the end of the day, but we're gonna wake up tomorrow and it's gonna be such a good day. 
Because, you know, I'll be first thing in the morning. I'll be all groggy, forget what's going on. I'll get out of the truck to do my pre-trip and I'll just see it just shining. It's going to make me so happy tomorrow. It's gonna be really nice, don't you think? First thing in the morning. Probably totally gonna to forget that I washed the truck. Be a nice little surprise for myself. I like surprising myself like that every now and then. <laughs> We drove 1,003 kilometers today, so 620 miles. We got a lot done. We went for a walk first thing this morning. Got the truck washed. Got a full day of driving in, and we're about 14 hours or 1,400 kilometers or so, or uh, how many miles would that be? Uh, 1,400 kilometers. Divided by 1.61. 870 miles from my destination. So I'll be able to make it most of the way tomorrow. We'll go a full day tomorrow and then we'll just have a little bit to do the next day. We'll get those two skids that I have on my trailer off. And then the following day, my delivery appointment is at noon for the majority, the, the main part of the load. And that's in uh, Hawapaj, Hawapaj, Ha. Hapaj, Hapaj, New York. H A U P P A U G E. How do you pronounce that? Hapaj, New York. That's where the majority of us going. That's where we'll be empty. Uh, from there, I have no idea what's on the agenda. I might be heading up to Southern Ontario, uh, grab some freight there around Toronto, head back home from there. Who knows? We'll find out then. All I know is right now I'm going back there, I'm going to bed. So I'll see you right here first thing in the morning. We'll see where we're at. Let's go get ourselves some breakfast. I'm already I'm already hungry looking forward to it. I'm trying to limit how much I eat though, because there's no point in going for a nice long walk every day if I'm just gonna ruin it and overeat. Let's see, let's see if we can stick to this. It's been hard to find motivation. It's been hard to find the motivation to lose weight. But uh, I can do it. It's for my kids. I want to be here to as long as possible. <laughs> 